Good evening and welcome to today's session on BIC streams. When Mysore inspired the United States, how Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan influenced America's founding fathers. Uh, joining us today are our panelists, Amin Ahmad and Nidin Olikara. Uh, before I hand over to Nidin, uh, for those of you who are here for the first time and want to receive updates from us, you can do so by visiting our website or you can follow us on our social media channels, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Um, and with that, welcome everyone and over to you, Nidin. Thank you, Rago, and welcome everybody. Thank you, BIC, for this great opportunity to talk to you all. And uh, Amin, welcome. Thank you, Nidin. Hey, Amin. Hi. Thank you. All right, Amin. Um, I think your biodata is there for everybody to, to produce. And, uh, but I have a question, you know, before we move to how Hydra and Tipu inspired uh, America, I have a question, how did you get here? I mean, you're a guy who's worked with the World Wildlife Fund. You've done photography, which has come in time. You are well known in Tumkur as an RTI man, as an RTI activist, especially in the conservation and environmental front. How did you how did you get to Hyder and Tipu? Thanks, Nidin. Uh, that's a very good question. I think uh, human history and uh, environment and, and environment history uh, they are interlinked in many ways. And you know, reading natural history uh, always made me curious about uh, human history. Uh, you know, visiting all these all these forests and uh, all these wilderness areas, I always was curious about these uh, old forts, these old temples, uh, you know, lying in ruins. So, uh, you know, th that, that is something that always uh, intrigued me. Now, uh, when I was in, uh, when I was studying in University of Toronto in 2004, I uh, got uh, my hands, like I laid my hands on a copy of Babar Nama. And, uh, you know, that increased my curiosity, curiosity about the historical events and uh, personalities that shaped the Indian subcontinent. And uh, lastly, I also come from a family uh, that has authors like who have written about history. I have an uncle who, uh, who, who was a professor in, uh, uh, in history in, U in USA. And uh, my dad also is an is a author. He's written a few books on uh, history. So, yeah, so that, that I think, uh, got, me on to, uh, got me on to where I am now. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So it's basically a family of historians. And uh, I mean, it's wonderful that you've contributed so much. Now, the next question, how did you get to this particular topic? You know, either Tipu and America. Yeah, um, you know, I began writing about uh, about history uh, more often in newspapers, particularly about uh, wildlife and forest conservation during British rule over the Mysore Kingdom. And uh, as someone who was born and brought up in uh, in uh, this part of uh, India, you know, the former the princely state of Mysore, you know, I grew up listening to stories of uh, Hyder Ali, Tipu Sultan, Wadayars, Shivaji. Uh, you know, and uh, and and and, uh, and then you know, uh, over a period of time, I began reading uh, seriously about uh, about these personalities, and then uh, but 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 five five six years ago, I read a story about uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, one of America's founding fathers and uh, its first foreign diplomat. So there was this story that said that you know he had uh, uh, he had an, he had a correspondence with Tipu Sultan, you know. And uh, Tipu Sultan apparently uh, sent, uh, you know, money. He recognized America, and uh, and he sent money to uh, to the revolutionaries. Now I was curious to figure out the truth, the truth behind it, and uh, I started searching for primary sources. Uh, although you know, un I was unable to find, I was, I was unable to reach uh, to the uh, primary sources. What happened was um, I stumbled stumbled upon this uh, website, Founders Online of uh, the United States National Archives and uh, Records, uh, Records Administration. Now, in 2010, the National Archives collaborated with the uh, University of Virginia to host uh, historical documents related to the Founding Fathers on a website. Uh, this website, Founders Online, was launched in 2013 and now has over 181,000 freely available documents. 
and it deals with various as aspects of these people, both uh, political and uh, personal. Uh, so it is it is interesting that you know Nidin, uh, you might be aware of this that literature on uh, Indo-European relations in 18th century century, particularly on Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan's connection with the French, uh, and then you know the the British literature on uh, the, 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 on uh, these two uh, rulers of Mysore. You know, it's it's not very hard to come by over the past few decades, particularly from <laughs> British just like the British Library. Uh, but I believe access to information on uh, Indo-US relations from the same period uh, eased only recently, thanks to internet and particularly to this uh, this wonderful effort effort by the United States National Archives. Yeah. So yeah. So that's that's how I got uh, I got hooked onto this particular. Uh, subject of uh, research, yeah. I mean, that, that's wonderful. How a small uh, query in your mind of if if Tipu did send money to the Americans, uh, you know, put you up on this voyage. And I think this is, especially for the audience here, though I have been studying Haider, Tipu, that part of Mysore for close to, uh, for a little more than 20 years now, the only thing, the only connection, and I think a lot of us know it, is between America and the Haider Tipu is, you know, about the rockets and about how the American national anthem and the rockets, red glare, the bombs bursting in the air. Uh, you know, those were the Congreve rockets. So across the Baltimore Harbor, when, when, when the English um, were shelling Fort McHenry, uh, this was when Francis Scott Key, uh, who, who wrote the anthem, was there in the British ship and he shot and he saw the, the flaring rockets uh, with an orange flame, but he said it was red, um, being fired on Fort McHenry. And these were essentially Congreve rockets developed by a British inventor uh, who was in charge of the British uh, Armory at Woolwich, William Congreve. And the idea for the rockets came from India and from Mysore. And these were Hyders and Tipu's iron case rockets. So a lot of us know that it is Mysore which is credited with developing the first metal cased rockets you know so even today a, a ship flies uh, from nasa or our own the indian space program we are among the best in the world uh, so the precursor or the earliest ancestor to all the rockets that we use whether it's in military rockets or remote sensing are tipu's rockets or hyder's rockets mysorean rockets and congreve adapted worked he was working on the europeans were working on rockets but they could never get it right and when when after Mysore fell in 1799. By 1804, they reverse engineered a lot of the Mysore rockets and did good stuff. So uh, it was these rockets which eventually were used. And it was that red flame which, you know, which Francis Scott Key was impressed and he, he wrote the, the anthem there. Uh, a lot of us won't even know, or may not know that even, you know, the White House was, was, it was, I think, in 1812 or 1814. It was just called the President's Office and it was. When, 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 again, the British rockets played a part in burning the White House down and the color changed uh, to, to rather dark and they whitewashed it and they called it the White House. So you have rockets all over. So, I mean, you've done some excellent work and this is, this is I would say, pioneering work um, from what I have looked at it preliminarily. So, uh, my, my, what I would like you to do now is, you know, give us all a, a summary of this, you know, the, the question that's there of, how Haider and Tipu inspired America or the founding fathers. So just walk us through that. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, I see George Washington, uh, Benjamin Franklin, uh, John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, Alexander Hamilton, and James Madison. Uh, these are among the most important figures that helped uh, form United States of America and shape its uh, destiny in its uh, infancy. Now, these are its uh, founding fathers. Uh, some also add the names of uh, Samuel Adams and uh, John Jay. Now, what has their literature got to do with India, especially Mysore Kingdom? Uh, if you look at the if you look at the correspondence and the intelligence gathering of uh, America's founding fathers, uh, you know it reveals that they not only keenly monitored uh, British affairs uh, across the globe, but they also desired that Britain lose to her enemies, particularly to Mysore Kingdom in India. Uh, where it arguably faced as its uh, stiffest military, mi military and political challenge. Now, uh, they, these people, they believed that the success of uh, Britain's enemies elsewhere would help America achieve its independence not only faster, but also on its own terms. 
Uh, for those of you who are not aware, uh, Mysore Kingdom during this period uh, was first ruled by uh, Hyder Ali, uh, upon whose death uh, his son uh, Tipu Sultan in 1782 succeeded him. And the political boundaries of uh, Mysore Kingdom uh, are primarily centered on present-day Karnataka state in southern India. Now, there is this question. Why was there an uprising in America? Uh, what happened was in early 1770s, uh, frustration brewed against uh, Britain's trade practices in its colon colonies in America, particularly on the East Coast. And these colonies uh, had no choice but to pay high taxes on goods imported for cheap uh, from other British colonies like India and uh, sold to them at a premium. Now, these colonies were prohibited from uh, exporting or, uh, you know, to or trading directly with each other. For example, if George Washington wanted, wanted to do business with, uh, uh, business with um, uh, you know, India, he couldn't do that without, without the approval of East India Company. So that, that, that was also one of, the, one of the factors. Now, the shareholders of British East India, East India Company, the middleman, basically, uh, they profited immensely from this. Uh, so, you know, frustrated, uh, 13 American states formed the United States of America and the Second Continental Congress, representing these colonies, uh, declared independence from Great Britain on 4th July 1776. So that is, that is the independence day. Now, the next question, why did the American revolutionaries look to my sort? Uh, Americans found support in the French who were keen to get back to, uh, who, who were keen to get back at British for their defeat in the Seven Years' War of 1754 to 63. And in addition, uh, in addition to France and the American colonists, England, uh, you know, England had to uh, face the fury of Spain, Netherlands, and native kingdoms in India in what turned out to be a conflict that was fought across the European colonies spanning much of the globe. Now, as Britain tried to subjugate uh, the fledgling uh, United States of America, uh, the revolutionaries looked to Britain's enemies to draw inspiration in their own struggle. Uh, the rulers of Mysore Kingdom uh, were at the vanguard of uh, opposition to British in India and thus found themselves at the center of this unprecedented international conflict. And not surprisingly, Americans took a keen interest in uh, Britain's conflict with Mysore Kingdom many thousand miles away. Now, next question is, how did the revolutionaries come to know of uh, the Mysore Kingdom? Uh, yes. You know, though, yeah, though, Louis, uh, you know, though Louis XVI, the French king, uh, he recognized America's independence uh, in February 17, 1778, there were some French who were very eager to put the revolutionaries in touch with Britain's enemies elsewhere, even before that. You know, the earliest formal introduction of an Indian ruler to America's founding father. Uh, according to my, my research, it seems to be a letter in French that was written to Benjamin Franklin by Comte de Tressan. Uh, he was the Lieutenant General of uh, Armies of uh, France. In, many, in one of his many, uh, in one of his many uh, letters to Benjamin Franklin, he wrote from Paris on uh, 24th June 1777, in which he called Hyder Ali, and I quote, a brave Mughal prince, unquote. And uh, he offered to put the United States Congress uh, in touch with, uh, you know, with a European who was working for Hyder Ali. And as you know, we know that, you know, Hyder Ali was, uh, you know, he was known to have Europeans on his payroll. And uh, he had the French, he had other Europeans who, who uh, fought on his behalf and, you know, who, who provided a technical know-how uh, to, uh, to the Mysore Kingdom. Now, who was Benjamin Franklin? Uh, he was a scientist, a, a very learned man, and, uh, and he was a leading figure of American Indian independence movement. And uh, between 1776 and 1778, he spent time in France, garnering support for an independent America. Now, he became the country's first diplomat in 1779, when his credentials uh, were received by the French court and he served there till uh, 1785. Now, it is to be noted that the names of Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan had already reached America around the same time through racehorses. Uh, I will probably speak about it uh, a little bit later. So, yeah. Americans already knew about Hyder Ali and Tipu, Tipu Sultan through racehorses. That, that, that those names came from England. 
Now, in addition, the Americans also knew of the happenings in India, in India from non-French European residents of United States of America who had traveled to East Indies uh, either for commerce or to fight for the colonial powers. Now, East Indies refers to, the, to a wider geographical area of South Asia and the many archipelagos of uh, Southeast Asia. And the British, British East Indies uh, during the American Revolution was chiefly peninsular and uh, East India, that is the co uh, uh, Koromandel coast and uh, Bengal province. You also have Sri Lanka along with a few islands in the Bay of Bengal uh, along with the, the Arabian Sea. Now, then you had an enemy's enemy that came, came to be seen as a friend. You know, American revolutionaries, they tracked Britain's fate across the globe. Uh, one letter that points to this is uh, that of Jonathan Williams to John Adams, uh, dated 28 March 1779. Uh, now, who was Adams? Uh, he was a leading figure in America's freedom movement. Uh, he was a lawyer who graduated from Harvard, and uh, he was a delegate to the First and Second Continental Congress. Uh, Congresses. You know, the, the, con the Congress was then known as the United States Congress was then known as the Confederate Congress or the Continental Congress. Now, he was an American diplomat in France and England during the war. And he was also a part of America's team that negotiated peace. And after the war, he was elected as America's first vice president under George Washington. And he succeeded him as the nation's uh, second president in 1797. Now, what was happening in India then? You know, around the same time, if we come back to India from America, uh, you know, Hyder Ali was angry, he was bitter at English, uh, and he wanted to get back uh, at them for not, honoring, for not honoring the terms that ended the first Anglo-Mysore War uh, on 3rd April 1769. Uh, the treaty required um, Hyder Ali and uh, English to help each other in case of ex external attacks. Uh, Hyder Ali uh, suffered a humiliating defeat at the hands of Maratha armies, led by um, uh, Triambuk Mama. Triambuk Mama was uncle of uh, Peshwa Madhava Rao. Uh, this was in 1771-72. And uh, he lost most of, it, of, of his kingdom and he had to uh, rush back to Sri Lankapatna. Uh, most of his kingdom was taken away by the Marathas. And now the British renegade on their promise. He, he asked the British for help. They didn't come to him. Uh, not, when, not only were numerous towns and temples of his kingdom plundered by the Maratha armies, he was also forced to pay a huge ransom to buy peace. Now, this was something that, uh, that he had in his mind. Now, um, Hyder Ali learned about the war clouds in Europe, you know, about the gathering war clouds in Europe, and he came up with a grand plan to oust East India Company from, uh, from India. And he made uh, peace, uh, you know, peace proposals to the native kingdoms, particularly the Marathas and the Nizam, uh, who agreed to ally with him. <clears throat> Now, uh, Hyder Ali, if there is, there, is a, there, is a, there is a source, there is a book written in 1789 by Inis, uh, Inis uh, Moore, that, that, that gives a very good account of, uh, of uh, how Hyder Ali came up with, with uh, you know, uh, requesting the native kingdoms for support. And apparently that the author writes in 1789 that Hyder Ali wanted to free India from the clutches of British from Ganges to Cape Comorin. So, you know, clearly somebody had a vision to think about the dangers of English as a colonial power and wanted his contemporary, uh, contemporary Indian rulers to act in, in order to save future generations of, India, of Indians. Now, uh, how did the revolutionaries view the developments in India? The American revolutionaries exchanged information about these developments in India uh, and their intelligence reports mentioned ships sailing to East Indies in 1780. Now, in his letter to the president of Continental or the Confederate Congress, dated 10th June uh, 1780, John Adams threw more light on the conflict in India, and he provided the Congress with the details of movement of uh, Admiral, British Admiral Hughes, uh, his squadron, in which he referred to Hyder Ali, and I quote, as the famous Hyder Ali. So you had this freedom fighter of America, John Adams, who wrote to the United States Congress, referring to Hyder Ali as the famous Hyder Ali. And this letter was read in the uh, Congress on 25th September, 1780. And John Adams, as we know, was the second, uh, was the first VP of uh, United States and the, and the second president of uh, United States. Yeah, Nidin. That's wonderful. So, uh, so I mean, what I, what I, what I, 
feel now is the Americans were closely following what was happening here and uh, whatever was happening here in terms of wars, in terms of um, British intervention here was also being looked at. Uh, the French had a role to play. And uh, I have a question. Um, did great battles, for example, we know Polilor. So in yeah. 1780, uh, Hyder and Tipu, you know, that was, that was England's greatest defeat here uh, yeah. in India, in the subcontinent. Uh, yeah. There was none before and there was none after that of that magnitude where uh, two British regiments and seven Indian battalions were virtually exterminated. So about two and a half thousand people, I think just 235, if memory serves me right, survived that. And it was a most humiliating defeat. And towards the end of that, I think 1782, there is a record of a British uh, writer writing back to, to England saying that in India, uh, one, out of, one out of five uh, British uh, Englishmen in India are in Hyder's prison. So that was a tremendous battle. So did great battles like this also have reverberations there and uh, where they known that, that, that something like this tragic has happened to England here in India? Did that strike a chord there in America? Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Nidin. And this is, this is one of the things uh, <clears throat> that I found out in my research. Okay. You know, uh, in uh, July 1780, you know, Hyder Ali's men, they burst into the territories of the British and their allies. And the Mysorean armies, uh, they immediately scored a series of uh, victories. Uh, this included the humiliating defeat of Colonel Bailey at the Battle of Polilor in September, uh, on September 10th, uh, 1780. Uh, so that was led by, uh, that was by an army led by Tipu Sultan. Now, uh, the Mysorean rockets are said to have played a major role in their uh, defeat, if you look at contemporary English uh, writers. And then, uh, now this, this battle actually echoed uh, not only uh, the, you know, the, the consequences of this battle not only echoed in uh, England, but also they reverberated through the, the camps of uh, American revolutionaries. For example, you know, John Adams in his letter to uh, Hendrik uh, Calcon and uh, Calcon on uh, 27th October 1780. So he stated that the English defeats in East Indies would be of a greater consequence uh, than if the same had occurred elsewhere. You know, uh, uh, Calcon was a Dutch lawyer who became the president of uh, High Court of uh, Holland later. Now, uh, C.W.F. Dumas uh, in his letter in French to, to John Adams dated uh, 15 February 1781 from The Hague. He wrote that the British affairs in India were in a bad state. And he mentioned Hyder Ali's name in that. And he said that, you know, Hyder Ali with French help had gained, upper hand, uh, had gained an upper hand over the British. And who was Dumas? Now, uh, he was a Swiss journalist who was a secret, a secret agent of the United States and a, French, uh, and a friend of uh, Benjamin uh, Franklin. Now, while he resided in The Hague, uh, Netherlands, he developed a code that helped revolutionaries secretly communicate with their confidants in uh, Europe. You know, he is someone who is respected by uh, CIA and uh, as, as can be found on the agency's website. So you had, you, had, uh, you know, uh, the people who were precursor to the modern day uh, Central in Intelligence Agency. These people writing about Hyder Ali, you know. And uh, then you had, uh, yeah, you had uh, Edmund Jen Jennings Randolph communicated, you know, Edmund, Ed Edmund uh, Rand Randolph, he communicated a more detailed account of uh, Hyder Ali's campaign to John Adams on 4th April 1781 from Brussels. Now he wrote about the receipt of uh, a London based newspaper that gave an insight of events from across the globe that mattered to American revolution. And uh, it included information uh, about Hyder Ali's, uh, 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 about Hyder Ali's army of 80,000 horses uh, and his siege of Arcot. And it narrated the route of uh, Colonel Bailey and Colonel Fletcher together with the loss of, uh, you know, he mentioned that there were 400 Europeans and 4,000 Indian sepoys who were either captured or killed. Uh, sepoys, Indians, uh, sepoys are basically native soldiers employed, uh, Indian soldiers employed by Europeans. Uh, and it also, mess, you know, included information about uh, Hyder Ali's massive territorial gains and the narrow escape of uh, Colonel Monroe to Madras. 
Now, Randolph uh, was an aide de camp to General George Washington in 1775. And uh, he was also America's uh, second Secretary of State, succeeding Thomas Jefferson in 1794. And Washington, as we know, he was America's first president. But uh, Washington was also the commander in chief of the United States of America from July 1775 to December 1783. Now, four days later, this is interesting, huh? Four days later, that's on the 8th of April 1781, a 13-year-old boy uh, wrote to his mother from Leyden about Hyder Ali's victories and mentioned the death of Colonel Fletcher and the capture of Colonel Bailey. The boy was John oh. Quinn Adams, yeah, and who went on to become uh, the sixth president of America in 1825. And he wrote a diary, you know, from an young age. So you had, you, had, um, you had not just contemporary American revolutionaries who were inspired, who, uh, you know, who, were, who were awed by uh, Hyder Ali's and Tipu Sultan's victories. You also had you know, would-be American presidents and would-be uh, American uh, you know, top statesmen who, who, who learned about Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan at a very young age. And you know, then Benjamin Franklin wrote to uh, Samuel Huntington from Passy on, 4th, uh, on 14th May 1781 about the worsening state of British affairs in East Indies. Now, Huntington was, uh, you know, he was the president of Continental Congress from uh, September 79 to uh, July 1781. And he was one of the 56 signers of the Declaration of uh, Independence. On the same day, uh, Benjamin Franklin also wrote to a Marquis uh, de Lafay. Uh, he said, if English, uh, whom he compared to a drunken dicer, uh, if they lost their commerce in India, it would lead to their overall loss of power. Now, uh, Marquis, uh, Marquis de Lafayette uh, was uh, a French aristocrat who supported the Revolutionary War even before the French king did. And uh, this gentleman, de Lafayette, he actually fought alongside General George Washington at the Battle of Yorktown, which is which is probably the greatest land victory in, uh, in, uh, in, in, in the, during the American Revolutionary War. Now, on 22nd May 1781, John Adams, you know, wrote to Abigail Adams, uh, who's the wife of uh, uh, John Adams, you know, uh, from Amsterdam and informed her of English territorial and trade losses in India. Now, William Heath, uh, another gentleman wrote to George Washington from Roxbury on 18 June 1781. And uh, he mentioned that the French army had attained military success in East Indies and Great Britain was close to losing all its territories there. Now, uh, it's interesting, huh? William Heath was a commander of Lower Hudson District in the Continental Army. At the same time, George Washington was with the main army in Yorktown. So you had in the middle of these pitched battles uh, that Americans were fighting with the English, you had the, the American battle commanders discussing about the issues that were happening in India. And uh, they, they wouldn't do that unless and until that affected their chances of gaining independence or you know, speeding up their independence. And uh, you know, then lastly, you had uh, Richard Cranch, uh, he in his letter to John Adams on 22nd June 1781 from Boston, he wrote about uh, Hyder Ali's victories in India. And according to him, <clears throat> the Americans received letters from Spain that gave an account of Hyder Ali's victories over the English in India, and which he said, you know, a country on which Britain's pride was fed and fostered. He said, India is a country on which Britain's, Britain's pride is fed and fostered, and they are closing, they're close to losing that country, thanks to Hyder Ali. And uh, Richard Cranch was a jurist, and he became a se senator in Massachusetts in 1787. Yeah, yeah. I think it's wonderful, I mean, because, you know, um, Tipu was an internationalist, so we know of his embassy to, to France, that's well documented, 1787, a year earlier, he sent an embassy to Constantinople, today's Istanbul, that's Turkey. Uh, both of them were essentially missions asking the Turks and, and the French to help Mysore expel the British from India and, and a very dynamic guy. I mean, there is no record of any other Indian uh, king, you know, sending an embassy outside as far away as, as France. So 
This is tremendous. So Tipu was an internationalist, but what you have done here, Amin, is, is tremendous because this is like an old secret, you know, you, it's like you going out and finding a box, a treasure box and opening it. And uh, because this, this, this work has not been done by anyone uh, and you suddenly stumbled upon a treasure and one can only hope that you go forward, get more stuff and several others, you know, now you've told us where these records are. And I'm sure the archives in America will have a, a further treasure trove of this, you know, there's, there's so much more research than go, that can come up here. So wonderful, you've done an excellent job and we're all thankful to you, I mean, for opening up a new uh, door, uh, which is basically my Soran and American relation. Uh, a question here, in all your research, you look through so many letters, many of this, many of which you mentioned here, uh, were, the, were the Americans talking about any other king? Because, you know, in the 1770s, 80s, a lot of other stuff was also happening here in India. You know, there, were, there was turbulence in Bengal, there was turbulence here with the Marathas, the Mughals were constantly uh, bickering around with, uh, with Awad, with governors in uh, Murshidabad and stuff. So, uh, have, uh, did you read about any other contemporary Indian state at that time in, in American records? Or is Mysore the only one that you came across? Anitin, that's a very good question. Now, uh, the Americans knew what was happening in India. That's number one. Uh, they knew about Mysore Kingdom and they knew about the Marathas. So um, there is a letter that John Adams wrote to John Jay uh, on 13th August 1782 from The Hague and urged American revolutionaries to remain steadfast in their thirst for an independent United States of America. And, you know, he wrote about one uh, Fitzherbert's commission that was constituted in United States of America and which was which was authorized to work with a uh, quote and I quote four powers that were at war with Great Britain. Uh, but uh, in the same letter, he, he he says that he is not sure if one of these letters referred to Hyder Ali or the Marathas. Okay. Now, <clears throat> yeah, so the, the name of Marathas also comes. But if you speak of individual rulers, uh, the only rulers of uh, India who have been mentioned by the founding fathers are Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan. That's they've phenomenal. Yeah, uh, they've been named and uh, I'll just show you. Yeah, so this is a letter. Uh, and here you see, uh, there is this mention of uh, uh, Tipu Sahib. Tipu Sahib on the treatment of Colonel Floyd. So this is a letter that uh, yeah this is a letter that uh, you can see this here colonel floyd which considered be between you know tipu sahib okay now this Absolutely. this is a letter that was uh, that was written to uh, george washington by thomas jefferson so george washington was the first president in, uh, in of united states and uh, in uh, you know in may 1791 this was one of the letters that uh, jefferson wrote to Uni to uh, washington so you have many letters like these. You have many letters. I mean, like I, 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 I'll interrupt you. May 1791 or 81? Yeah. This is May 1791. So I'm, I'm quoting a letter. So, 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 so the Americans were interested in Mysore as late as 1791. Wonderful. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So you have, so it's, it's a period. So it's, uh, so right now I'm speaking only about uh, how America, uh, you know, American founding fathers were, were inspired or influenced by Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan. So I'm speaking of a period between 1776 to uh, 1784. But you also have letters, you know, after the peace. Thomas Jefferson wrote many letters referring to Tipu Sultan. And then he wrote, uh, then uh, George Washington, there are letters. Uh, there is communication with and from George Washington that speaks of, of, uh, of Tipu Sultan. Yeah. So that's, that's wonderful. That's, Thomas Jefferson. So Thomas Jefferson was in Paris for a while. He was an ambassador there. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So and I, and I, what happened was, yeah. He referred to the Mysorean delegation. Yeah, uh, I'll give ahead. a background because there are quite a few, quite a few people who have, uh, you know, who have written about this topic about, you know, Tipu Sultan's uh, embassy that went to uh, France. Uh, but I'll just give a, probably a minute, in a minute, I'll give a background to what happened. Now, uh, you know, the United States ratified, the, Thomas Jefferson was America's second diplomat to France. 
you know, when he succeeded Benjamin Franklin okay. in 1785. Now, you know, the United States ratified the Paris Treaty on, uh, United States Congress ratified the Paris Treaty on 14 January, 1784. Uh, France, the main ally, uh, the main European ally of Tipu Sultan had already ceased military hostilities uh, with the British in India after the preliminary, pre preliminary peace treaty was uh, signed the previous year. So Tipu Sultan was in the middle of a pitched battle with the British during the Third Anglo-Mysore War, I'm sorry, the Second Anglo-Mysore War. And then you, the French suddenly said, hey, you know what, we are not fighting with British anymore, you are on your own. Uh, um, now Tipu Sultan had no option but to make peace with the British despite having an upper hand, particularly with his siege of the port of Mysore. Uh, Mangalore, I'm Mangalore. Sorry. Mangalore, yeah. <clears throat> Kodial Bandar. Yeah. And uh, then after, after humiliating the British to sign the Treaty of uh, Mangalore in 1784, again, there are contemporary uh, British uh, sources that, that speak of uh, uh, Tipu uh, looking at, you know, the, the peace uh, emissaries, the peace, the ambassadors of British with content. Uh, so because he had an upper hand. Now, uh, Tipu intensified his uh, international diplomacy by sending Mysore Kingdom's ambassadors to powers beyond South Asia. Now, there are letters by Thomas Jefferson to this effect. And uh, on the other hand, also what happened was the Americans also began building their nascent country by beginning trade with India through the East India Company. Uh, and uh, as indicated by many letters, particularly one letter by, uh, by John Adams to John Jay in November 1785. Yeah, so there are numerous letters that speak of, uh, 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 of Thomas Jefferson uh, you know, uh, making a day-to-day -day account of, uh, uh, of uh, Tipu Sultan's embassy traveling to Paris. And, you know, he makes notes, he sends the communication back, the official commission, communication back to the United States about, about Tipu Sultan's uh, embassy there. Yeah. Wonderful. I mean, it's so interesting. It's less like maybe our ambassador in, in China keeps a track of maybe, I don't know, the Pakistani president visiting China and sends, you know, reports to India, this guy went here, you know, other than what the press gets. So yeah. all this was happening even then. So, I mean, that's wonderful. And so nice to know that Mysore was also a big part of this. So yeah. if I could ask you. Uh, if I can interrupt you for a quick minute. So this is yeah. a letter by, this is a letter by Thomas Jefferson. Okay. Uh, you know, he, he writes here, the news of the day so far as to be relied on are the arrival of Tipu Sahib's embassy at uh, Tulan. Oh, too long, so France. Okay. Yeah, this is a letter dated June 18, uh, 1788. And this is a letter in the handwriting of uh, Thomas Jefferson. Yeah, go ahead, Nitin. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for showing this. Okay. So I, uh, my question here now, the next question would be, what, what do you think was my, the Mysorean contribution to American, to their uh, struggle to come up as a, independent state. What was their contribution to America? What was Mysore in contribution to, say, modern America? Uh, Nitin, a couple of things here. Um, you know, the actual, uh, we spoke about how the Americans looked at what was happening in India. Uh, but what I also want to mention is, uh, you know, when the negotiations, when the peace negotiations were happening in America, the founding fathers actually looked up to, uh, you know, the, the, the founding fathers actually looked to Mysore to get, uh, you know, to get news, positive news to, uh, to uh, you know, make sure that they could, they could gain um, concessions from the British. So there are many letters to this effect, which say, you know, uh, there's in fact one letter wherein, uh, one of America's founding fathers says that, you know, we are waiting on a, on a day, on, on an hourly basis to receive good news uh, from, uh, from uh, India so that, you know, it can have a positive impact on our own, uh, on our own uh, negotiations of the peace treaty. Now, uh, I think uh, as far as Mysore's, uh, uh, the, the contribution of Mysore to America's uh, 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 independence is concerned, we have discussed that. But even beyond that, see, if we, if we look, uh, Haider Ali, Tipu Sultan, and, you know, all the American founding fathers, they were contemporaries. Uh, I'm not very sure if, uh, uh, if Haider Ali and Tipu Sultan, uh, how they felt about uh, the founding fathers, but we sure from the letters that we have, we have seen today, there, there are in fact hundreds of letters. I've just selected a, 
uh, uh, I have select, I've presented a select few here. So from, from the correspondence, um, it, it seems that they were definitely impressed by what's happening in India. And uh, there is in fact one letter somewhere in 1803. Uh, uh, this is, this is uh, a research done by another researcher. So that, that uh, letter states uh, about, you know, it speaks about Tipu Sultan and Hyder Ali and says, you know, we need to draw inspiration from them. So this is even after Tipu's death, there is a letter. Okay. Uh, which, yeah, which is written, I, I think it's in 1803. So it says, you know, we need to draw inspiration from the fight, from the freedom fight of uh, Tipu Sultan and Hyder Ali. So my belief is that, yeah, they certainly definitely had a long lasting impact. And we also saw how, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, John, John Quincy Adams, as a child, he wrote about Hyder Ali and uh, Tipu Sultan's victories, and he went on to become America's sixth president in 1825. So, uh, yeah, I think they must, they, they probably would have had, I would say, they probably would have had. A so, very, so every, every news, so I, I guess, like every news of a British uh, uh, defeat or a British setback in India was something positive for the Americans, especially in that important period between 1776 and 1782, when uh, the, the British, you know, those were the six years when the British had still not accepted that America was free. And it was only in 1782, six years after Cornwallis surrendered his sword uh, to Washington's ADC. Uh, it was only six years later, it was a formal peace between England and America. So I think these six years were crucial, uh, isn't it? Yeah, but three years. So uh, okay. Con Cornwallis, yeah, Cornwallis surrendered to George Washington in October 1781. And uh, so that was probably one of the greatest, uh, uh, you know, infantry victories of, uh, of uh, Americans over the, over the uh, British. And what happened was the next year, the very next year, the Americans, uh, you know, they achieved probably one of their greatest early naval victories over uh, over the over uh, the, the united states achieved one of their greatest naval victories over the british and uh, you know incidentally the name of that ship also was uh, hyder ali oh uh, we'll talk hyder about ali. that then okay yeah uss hyder ali good 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 wonderful yeah. Uh, yeah. i i also so so what you say is we are not very sure while we know that mysore affected america in sundry ways we are not very sure if if Hyder and Tipu also understood that the Americans were interested in them, right? We, we used to have not seen, we, we probably we research it here in India, if, if we can get any information on that, but we still don't know, right? I, I honestly, I have not uh, got hold of that material, but I do know that there are other uh, researchers, particularly in the United States, who have mentioned in their stories that, you know, uh, Tipu, you know, he recognized America as an independent country, and uh, you know he wrote to uh, you know, Benjamin Franklin, and uh, he corresponded with them. Uh, it, you know, honestly, I don't have, um, I have not seen primary sources. I have not seen actual material on that. So um, uh, maybe that's work that remains to be done. Yeah, it, yeah, and probably somebody is working on that. Hopefully. Wonderful. You mentioned race horses. Can we come to that? Yeah, uh, it's interesting. You know. Uh, there was this gentleman called as uh, uh, per, uh, uh, Peregrine Bertie. So he was okay. a duke in England, you know, in 1740s. And uh, he also was, you know, he was also a person who handled uh, horses for, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the queen of, uh, queen and king of uh, England. Uh, interestingly, you know what, this gentleman in 1765, uh, you know, he, he bred race horses and he named a horse as Hyder Ali in 1765 in England. Um, you know, this is interesting because, you know, uh, Hyder Ali gave his first major defeat to the British in uh, the first Anglo-Mysore War that was in uh, 1769. That's, all, that's when the war ended. Uh, but my guess probably is, you know, uh, Hyder Ali had a problem with the British uh, right from the beginning because, you know, uh, according to Professor Sheikh Ali, who has done some, uh, some uh, very good work on this. So according to him, uh, you know, according to his research, uh, apparently uh, Hyder Ali was promised the fort of Tirajanapali uh, when he supported the English uh, in its con conflict with uh, the French, you know, when he was with the Mysore Maharaja. Uh, but uh, 
but the English reneged again on their promise and said, yeah, we're not going to help you with that. And then uh, Hyder Ali became enemies with French. And uh, it's interesting that in 1760, somewhere in 1760, uh, one of Hyder Ali's, uh, you know, he, he was in fact his half brother. His name is Makhdoom Sahib. He defeated, uh, you know, he defeated uh, uh, an army of Major uh, Moor in uh, somewhere near uh, Pondicherry, uh, modern day Pondicherry. So he defeated his army. So the rise of Hyder Ali was probably noticed by English even before they got their first major defeat in 1769. And that probably influenced this gentleman, Peregrine Brady, to name a racehorse, a foal, um, after Hyder Ali in England in 1765. And it's very interesting that in 1769, the first horse by the name Tipu Sahib, oh. you know, well, yeah, there was a horse named after Tipu Sultan, and that was Tipu Sahib in 1769, the same year that, uh, you know, Tipu Sultan, he was about 18, 19 years old, and he rode up Got to it. the gate. Yeah, he rode up to the gates of Fort St. George and Madras, uh, yes. and yeah, Madras and, uh, you know, apparently the governors of uh, East India Company, the Madras governors, they, uh, according to Sheikh Ali, uh, Professor Sheikh Ali, you know, they, they sat in a dingy and they ran away along with the Nawab. In a boat. Yes, that's, that's correct. Boat, that's yeah. correct. So, yeah. So, you, you know, I think the British knew and they respected uh, their adversaries. And through these race horses in England, the names of Hyder Ali and Tipu Sahib were named, you know, the names went to America and race horses were named after, uh, after uh, Hyder Ali and Tipu Sultan even in America. So I'm going to show you one quick picture here. Um, so this is a picture I uh, sourced from the United States uh, Congress Library. And this is from a pamphlet in, uh, in 1798. You can see here, March wow. 20, yes. 1798. And, uh, you know, uh, so it says here, Hyder Ali. So recovery uh, by Hyder Ali. So Phenomenon is, a, is, a, is the name of a racehorse. And apparently it, uh, it uh, derived its origins from, the, from a horse named Hyder Ali. So this is in America again. Wonderful, wonderful. Hey, that's, that's wonderful. And, and you mentioned about that ship. There was a ship also named Hyder Ali. Yeah, uh, again, I think the name of the ship actually came, uh, you know, it, 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 it came through the racehorses. It's very interesting because uh, what happened was, you know, although uh, George Washington scored a very spectacular victory over uh, Cornwallis in, uh, in October 1781, uh, the, the British still ruled the seas. You know, they were harassing the... They were harassing the uh, Americans. They were capturing American ships. They were, uh, you know, they were looting their, uh, you know, their goods. And what happened was in 1782, um, the state of, uh, you know, the state of Pennsylvania, they actually, um, they uh, uh, purchased uh, a, 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 a ship named as Hyder Ali. Now, uh, this ship was, uh, uh, it was, it was, uh, uh, they uh, uh, armed it with guns. It was, a, it was a merchant ship, but they armed it with guns. And what happened was there was a gentleman named as uh, uh, Joshua Barney. So this gentleman, he, uh, he went ahead and he um, invited, he, he took charge of this ship and he, uh, he went ahead and he, uh, invited Americans to join American Navy, and he used a poem uh, written by Philip Morin Freno, and the poem actually exalted the bravery of Hyder Ali. So he said, "Come to this ship, you know, uh, come to this ship, and uh, you know, uh, take help America." And this ship is named after a brave Eastern uh, prince, uh, Hyder Ali. And wow. who, yeah, who bitten with the with the freedom's sacred flame against the usurping Britons, and he brought them to shame. He is oh. avenging the, he is avenging his country's wrongdoings. Come, you all young lads, come to this ship, and you know this ship uh, derives its name from Hyder Ali. So, oh, very uh, poetic thing. Oh, yeah, one of the earliest, yeah, one of the earliest U.S. naval recruitments happened in the name of Hyder Ali. 
and uh, that's that's something interesting yeah fascinating fascinating <laughs> wonderful wonderful uh, see um, i think you, again as i'll mention time and again your research is so interesting because it opens up new vistas um, and it encourages a lot of us to do further research just the other day i was seeing an article written by on on again tipu's relationships relationship with france you know the diplomacy with france a lot of it has already been written but there's so much more to explore um, a few days a few months ago i was i read a script written by one of my friends malika and ram ganesh you know they wrote an entire play called vanguard on on mysorean rocketry where you have the protagonists from all the sides you have french you have mysoreans you have british so you you know research like this opens up so many new areas and it's when you go to these areas and look into it do you discover uh, stuff that was hidden for so long and wonderful oh this, this is the hyder ali yeah this is uh, this is the hyder ali the, this is the conflict between hyder ali and uh, general monk this is a picture i have sourced it's a, it's a copyright free image i have sourced it from the internet so this is this is one of the one of the most uh, iconic images of that conflict yeah Wonderful, yeah, wonderful. So I'm, I mean, I'm impressed, and uh, I have to because no one has done this research before, and there's, we don't read it in books or see it because you're the first guy to be doing this. And uh, wonderful. Uh, I mean, do, do do you have anything else to say? I mean, any other something, anything else that's interesting that you can share with us? uh yeah, something I that you came across in this research or you know something you stumbled upon and what let me ask you what what was your happiest moment or uh, you know what did you say wow i didn't know this this was there you know in all these you examined thousands of documents and so many of these letters what was your wow moment i would probably say uh uh you know there is there is one incident what happened was uh you know 9 days after uh, george washington achieved his uh, victory over cornwallis uh, george washington's victory was celebrated in a church in new jersey okay in the state of new jersey uh, uh, trenton in the town of trenton now uh, so there the there are festivities the locals gather you know the local uh, presbyterian church uh the priest he uh, gets all the who's who of the town they gather there and they celebrate george washington's victory uh with 13 toasts and one of the toasts is raised for hyder ali wow okay. so george washington's victory is celebrated along with the you know you know hyder ali's victory is celebrated along with the victory of uh, george washington in a, in a small town in trenton in new jersey so and there are there are numerous letters like there are dozens of letters which men mention these kind of little things wonderful i i wonder i wonder what donald trump would make out of all this i mean <laughs> it's wonderful wonderful um i think it's it's great and um, ragu maybe we should open this up for questions from the audience um yes uh thank you i mean that that was a great a fantastic session and i think nidin is representative of all our excitement <laughs> of the audience uh we have a few questions uh and uh, there are a few similar ones so i'm going to club a few and uh, ask you that so priya sha asks if if there is any evidence of hyder or tipu being aware or interested in the events of american revolution i think you have uh, addressed uh, this particular question uh, um at some point um uh, uh, dsr rao asks how did they correspond who took the letters mode of travel port of exit he wants the details uh, and there are other questions um uh, similar questions which uh, asks uh, ask about uh, how how does hyder learn about war clouds in uh, uh europe and what was his source to learn these things yeah yeah that's pretty interesting now yeah. uh as far yeah as far as the letters are concerned uh they primarily were through uh, ships that were sailing sailing between uh, between the conflict area here in uh, east indies 
as well as uh, america now i think i have mentioned uh, i did mention at one of the places that uh, uh, one of the sources was through a ship that sailed one particular letter was sent uh, from a ship that was sailing from spain to europe and from europe it went to america so that was one particular uh, event uh, one particular time when the letters were shared and the other uh, the other um, uh, fact that i mentioned was uh, there was a, a newspaper from london which mentioned the defeat of colonel uh, bailey and colonel uh, uh, you know the capture of uh, david bear now um, so this again was through a newspapers now i will i will uh, i will uh, point out to something here see there were uh, there were a couple of modes of communication in uh, united states then uh from what i have uh, read you know there is a gentleman who has done a, who has in america who has done a very good research on communication during the american revolution so apparently the there was news that would go out to people through uh, newspapers but there was news that would also go out uh, as uh, pamphlets you know as uh, as brochures so people would basically uh, make brochures pamphlets and they would spread the news so uh so it went through ships it went and uh, it went through uh, newspapers and it probably also went through uh, pamphlets that were circulated yeah no i mean uh, th th it's a pertinent question because i i came across a newspaper uh and i came across a british newspaper very interestingly now that you are we are on the america topic uh called the gentleman the gentleman's magazine so this you know tipu died on may 4th 1799 and this was dated september so this this was a small uh, it said flash news and it said that seringapatam has fallen and tipu is reported to have fallen in the midst of battle and it says that they got this they got this piece of information from a passing ship that was on the way to new orleans so uh, this is interesting so uh, probably a british ship you know letters would be exchanged on ships so very often a ship traveling from india to england would meet a ship coming from england to india and exchange letters there so that was how letters also would be exchanged in the midst of the sea so this is something interesting because i it was in september that this particular newspaper got a report of tipu having fallen in battle from a letter that was going out of some information that was going to america so that is probably yeah so it's amazing how news would flow no yeah, absolutely and i would also uh, you know like to tell this uh, distinguished audience here you know this is this is something that i have not yet written about uh, published there are a couple of more stories that i would like to write on this uh, and then compile it as a as a as a research paper you know uh, it's very very interesting you know there is a gentleman uh, uh <clears throat> called as uh, tobias lear who writes a letter to george, george washington on 1st may 1791 from philadelphia now in the letter mr lear uh, he provides details of one captain truxton who arrives from india and he arrives with uh, a a message that he met charles cornwallis many times and uh, cornwallis sent a message to washington from india congratulating him on becoming the president of united states okay. and in that letter cornwallis says and i quote you know i quote the author of the letter tobias lear uh you know i quote him quoting cornwallis he says i am in troubled waters in india so we need to remember that you know cornwallis around that time he was leading english forces in india and uh, he was beaten back by tipu during the first siege of srirangapatna and it was only after you know the you know the bombay army along with uh, hari pant and parashuram bhau from uh, pune the maratha army is joined that he, he he could double his strength and he could uh, lay a siege back again you know and uh, yeah and this is a letter and uh, yeah so you have you have plenty of references like this and it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting there yeah wonderful maybe maybe you could take a look at the q and a if if you can answer any questions there i mean yes and if if any question uh, speaks to you you can take it up uh, uh, i'd like to point you to ila goods question which is what is the earliest information you have of east indians being present in the united states and is there any information that any of the founding fathers actually met indians from the subcontinent 
yes there is you know uh, the founding fathers letters if you look at the if, if you if you look at the material that is there on this website the founders online online website uh, i will tell you how i did i did the research so i basically used a few keywords to browse through the documents one was east indies and the other is hyder ali and then tipu sahib you know quite a few quite a few keywords and when i looked up uh, east indies uh, i did find quite a few uh, material dating back even to 1750s so you know uh, you had these people communicating uh, they knew about what was east indies and what was happening in east indies uh, way back in 1750s and we also need to remember that you know the boston tea party that happened in massachusetts that also was was because of the fact that that tea came from east indies from india so they they were procuring tea from india and they were selling it at a very very high price uh, in in uh, in america and that was the boston tea party was when the revolutionaries des- dressed as indians they uh, as natives they went and uh, they threw all the tea into the the tea that came from india and they threw it into the into the uh, into the sea yeah so they they knew of what was happening even right from 1750s abhishek khan says uh, i once came across a book that had a quote from uh, colonel wesley describing sultan bet chain he implied tipu sultan had a profound impact on him do you he is asking if you are aware of this and if he, he wants you to speak more about this uh no honestly i don't have information on that no he said like he said wellesley yes oh yes wellesley. oh sorry about that yeah absolutely he had a tremendous impact I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead no, i the, the voice got truncated i heard that as webly sorry about that nitin you can no. probably speak well, okay the duke of monington yeah, yeah yeah tremendous tremendous effect you, uh, you know um in 1799 a few days before tipu fell there was a, there was an there was a, a battle uh in a mango grove where um how man uh the future savior of england from france uh led his men into an ambush it was a rocket ambush where tipu's bandars you know were waiting and 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 virtually the whole force was annihilated and our man uh, wellesley um escaped with his life and um general harris was extremely displeased with him and refused to meet uh, it is said that wellesley refused to get out of his tent because he was so, he was so ashamed at deserting his men and and that night you know with the flurry of rockets coming in and and several of those men were captured and executed by by the mysoreans after two days and that left a tremendous uh, it impacted him for the rest of his life uh, you can call it shell shock or whatever and he he mentions it specifically and and there are several british commentators well well into the early uh, 1800s you know where he lived quite long even after that who say that uh, Wellesley was very considerate to to sailors and to army men who who left the battle in shell shock or in fright and he would usually say that they not be whipped or executed for desertion because he remembered those turbulent events when he himself fled that night from battle uh in uh, at the battle of malwali there in uh, shirangapatna so yes wellesley had a great great effect impact and 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 that that is that is of course uh the impact of that night but but wellesley's uh, uh experience in fighting tipu and especially the tipu's cavalry which his elder brother uh who was then the governor general said was the finest light cavalry in the world and i i mentioned the finest but then we are speaking of the irregular horse uh so the finest irregular horse in the world uh, and and that that year of fighting tipu as well as settling mysore because you had the dondiawag uh, rebellion after that so they, it took almost a year to settle mysore you had palegars uh, resisting and saying no we don't want english uh, hegemony over us uh, so that really helped them in 3 years you know they would finish off the marathas as well and india would fall to to england to, to england so well at least that year fighting tipu and settling mysore had tremendous impact on wellesley for the rest of his life and really helped him in the napoleonic wars because wellesley learned how to fight cavalry combat in different geographical areas uh, how to send logistics tipu had you know the bullocks uh, 
uh, you're setting up at a mox. Uh, so uh, mm -hmm. these, the how how to organize transport, how to organize infantry support, how to in organize ammunition, all those particular things were learned by Wellesley in in the fourth Anglo Mysore War. Certainly, it had an impact the state throughout his life. We have. Um, so, sorry, I mean, would you, did you have to add, add anything to that? Thank you. I said thank you. Uh, we have an American Civil War historian amongst uh, us, uh, Aaron Sturkey. Uh, he says he's he's congratulating you. Says it's a fascinating topic where not much research has been done. Indian influence on the American founding fathers and early republic would be a wonderful addition to the histor historiography. And great job to the speaker. Thank you. Um, uh, next, uh, Rajit and Alok have uh, somewhat related questions. Rajit asks, if, if, uh, is there any document that talks about Hyder Ali and Tipu's death and what the reaction in America? And Alok uh, asks, how was the loss of Tipu, the Battle of uh, Tirangapatnam, received in the US? Yeah, that's a very interesting question. Uh, you know, I think. Uh, uh, it, it is very interesting. You know, what happened was uh, the Americans were keen on developing trade. You know, they, they had to run their country. They, they, the war had ended. They had, they had huge debts. They had to pay back money. They took loans to fight the war. They took loans from Netherlands. They, they took loans from many European countries. And they took a big loan from France as well. And what happened was uh, there was a dispute between Americans and the French about the money that was to be returned. So from what I have read, learned, the Americans uh, refused to pay back the money to French, telling that, you know, the money was loaned by the king. The king is no more because the revolution took place, right? The king was, dis you know, he was thrown away. And uh, so then there was a war between French and Americans in 1790s. Uh, so the world, you know, it changed. Uh, then you have these Americans who were looking at what was, what was happening in India with curiosity. George Washington and his uh, contemporaries, they were exchanging letters about uh, Tipu, his battle victory, his battle losses in third uh, Anglo-Mysore war. And then uh, the letters I have seen, suddenly the information about Tipu and Mysore kingdom, it fades away. It starts to fade, fade away. Probably because, you know, business interests uh, preceded, preceded um, you know, their personal interest about what was happening back in India, uh, because the war had ended, it was a decade. Uh, now, how did they learn from, from, from uh, what I have seen? There was no letter correspondence. I have not seen, I would say. I wouldn't say there was no, but I have not seen any letter correspondence between the founding fathers. We also need to remember that George Washington died in uh, 1799. Uh, so there, is, there was no correspondence between the founding fathers. Uh, I have not seen letters. But there were newspaper reports in America that spoke about Tipu Sultan's death and uh, the capture of uh, the capture of Mysore Kingdom by by the British. So there were newspaper reports, and I have not seen letters to that effect. Yeah. Um, Kevin Fernandez asks, did the American founding fathers? I think oh, this connects. Uh, you you sorry, you just answered this question. Um, Um, Malika Sankaran, uh, she of course congratulates you on an interesting talk. Uh, uh, her question is not related to Hyder Ali directly, but she asks if you have uncovered examples of investments in the founding and building of America with fortunes made through the East India Company. Uh, the famous example is uh, uh, Eliyahu Yale and the Yale University, and uh, she thinks even before the revolution. It would be interesting to learn if other wealthy EIC individuals funded ordinary lives in America. Oh, yes, absolutely. Yes, that's a very, very, very good question. Uh, wealth from East Indies, from India was flowing into America. And uh, I, uh, there is one letter. There is a gentleman, uh, there is a British gentleman who, uh, you know, who had settled down in India and who had made considerable wealth. So he writes to one of the founding fathers and says, you know, I want to move back to, um, uh, to no, he, he actually had moved back to America. So he says, I've moved back to America from India without going to England. You know, I've moved back and I've brought back all my wealth and I have my brother who lives in India. 
uh, and I am requesting him to come over to the United States with, uh, with the wealth he has. And he says, and I quote, a considerable amount of wealth in India. So uh, there was wealth that, that uh, came from East Indies to America. And there is this letter, I think it's in 1778 or 1770, I think probably 1778. So there is this letter. So there were people who wanted, there were Englishmen, there were Europeans who wanted to come back to America with the wealth they made uh, from uh, India. And you know, there is another, uh, another document uh, I have uncovered. I think it's probably, probably a letter. I think it dates back to 1793. So uh, this is about, uh, uh, about a not so wealthy American who says that he went back, he went to East Indies, India, and he, he, he went as, you know, he went with, uh, you know, hardly any amount of money, but he came back a very, very wealthy man to America. So there is another reference uh, to that as well. Yeah. So, yeah. So there was wealth flowing from India to America then. Yeah. Yes, Natesh um, wants to know the outcome of the letter Hyder Ali wrote to other kingdoms in India to collaborate in throwing out the British. Yeah, thank you very much. I think this was another, this was a question asked by one of the, one of the viewers, uh, one of the audience, the person in the audience earlier, I, and I, I did not um, uh, answer that. And my, my apologies to that gentleman. Uh, and I'll club both the, both the questions together. Okay, this is interesting. Now, in, in, uh, there is this book by Innes Moore written in 1789. I think it's uh, titled The Operations of uh, East India Company in the Coromandel Coast from 17, uh, 1781 to 84. I think that is the title of the book, but it is written uh, by Ines Moore in 1789. Now he, in that book, he mentions specifically that, you know, Hyder Ali wrote letters to all the native kingdoms and the native kingdoms joined Hyder Ali in waging a war against the, uh, against the British. Now I have read from other sources that, you know, uh, the Maratha said, yes, the Nizam said, yes, and you know, Hyder Ali jumped into the battle. The preparation started in June 17, uh, 1779. He uh, invaded the Carnatic in 17 uh, in the next month in July 1779. Uh, so he in uh, uh, 17 I'm sorry. Uh, so he invaded the Carnatic in uh, July 1780. And from what I have read, it was Nizam of Hyderabad who first said, you know, I'm not going to fight this war. He backed off. And then uh, the Marathas also said, you know what, we are not going to fight this war. So it was Hyder Ali and Tipu alone who were fighting along with the, along with the French and other Europeans. They were, uh, they were trying to uh, tackle the British uh, in peninsular India. Uh, but I think there was another treaty that was, uh, that was signed in 1783, I guess, between uh, the native kingdoms and the English. Uh, which, which, uh, which basically said, you know, we are not going to fight a war with you. I, I, I'm, I'm forgetting the name of that treaty. Uh, there was, it, it's a, it's a pretty famous treaty between Marathas, Nizam, and, uh, and uh, the, the British. Yeah. So, so it, to answer that shortly, yeah. sorry. I think it's Salset, the treaty of Salset. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Rishikesh asks if, if you found any reference to Mysore rockets in the correspondence. Uh, not, not, uh, in, yeah, not, not in the correspondence of the founding fathers. Uh, there is, of course, a lot of information about the death and destruction that happened in the British camp, but I have not specifically seen uh, information about the founding fathers. But what I, uh, what I have found is, you know, um, this is, you know, this is, uh, this is still a virgin territory as far as the research is concerned. There is so much of material that is being found. And um, I see that, you know, sometime about six, eight months ago, somebody has uploaded a, a picture of a rocket being fired. Uh, it's uh, fired in 1789. So they're basically uploaded a painting of a, of a rocket being fired in 1789. And I think this is, this is probably the only contemporary painting of a rocket in action. There are rockets being held by uh, Mysorean rocket men. Uh, you know, they are, there are rockets, you know, being uh, lit up uh, by the Mysore rocket, rocket men. But there is, uh, there is a document. It's, so the document is actually in, uh, in Dutch. 
so and it was written by the dutch representative in sri lanka to his government way back in in uh, in netherlands so that's a very very interesting uh, picture and i would like to share that picture here uh, if you can just give me one quick minute here yeah so if you can see this picture so this is this is somebody has uploaded that uh, this is from a book uh, that has uh, letters of uh, of the dutch representative in sri lanka writing to uh, uh, his government in uh, netherlands so the book is actually so the letters are actually in dutch and you can see the rockets being fired so yeah so you can see you can see the horsemen here from the forest climbing on uh, a cotton bales and then you have the uh, you have the raja of travancore firing back uh, fi firing from cannons and then you have this rocket look at the trajectory it's amazing look at the trajectory and uh, this was this is one of the most interesting paintings i found you're right my... you're right i mean this 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 i have i i have seen this and this is from the uh, archives which are in amsterdam so yeah, uh, this is this is this is definitely to my opinion the first uh, depiction of rockets in action there is no pictorial depiction of rockets uh, so all the stuff that we see colored images and paintings are all done very very recently but this is the first one so uh, this is this is you know the prelude to the third anglo mysore war wherein you know the forts the dutch forts promised to tipu are compromised and given back to cochin especially the fort at ayakote and uh, so you have on one side cotton bales and uh, and tipu's men uh, besieging and climbing over those bales but they were unsuccessful uh, so it's a very interesting uh, sketch a beautiful sketch yeah thank you so i hope that answers the question yeah. uh, dr harshvardhan yadumurthy asks did tipu know about cornwallis's defeat at yorktown also cornwallis had a major setback during the third anglo mysore war Uh, it was also called the monsoon retreat caricatured by james gilray was this known to the americans yeah uh, the the first question i tried looking for material if tipu knew about uh, uh, about uh, the way cornwallis was defeated uh, in october 1781 uh, my okay my my gut feeling is that he would probably know because he Uh, Tipu and Hyderabad really had a very good intelligence, and they corresponded frequently with the French, and they they knew what was happening. And Tipu also had his representative. Hyderabad really and Tipu had their representatives who traveled to Europe and also to uh, to the Middle East, uh, to what what is Middle East today. So uh, they he would probably uh, he probably knew what was happening, but honestly, I have not seen any document on that. So my my guess is. as good as anybody's guess so it's a guess uh, as a research person i would like to state categorically categorically that i have not seen any document but as far as a uh, cornwallis's uh, action in india is concerned yes there is material on that there is correspondence of the founding fathers particularly thomas jefferson and uh, george washington which states that you know uh, in fact the letter i showed uh, about colonel floyd so that it is it is one of those uh, one of those letters where uh, the 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 americans learn about about the reverses suffered by the british and uh, and uh, they 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 knew that during the first siege of uh, sri lankapatnam cornwallis was successful he had to burst his big guns and run away from uh, from sri lankapatnam uh, withdraw from sri lankapatnam if i can use that word yeah nidin this is for you from vikar and i must say i uh, thank you vikar for helping us organize today's event not directly related to the event but vikar is very curious to know the provenance and vintage of the arms displayed in your background nidin oh, oh my god yeah yeah this is, some of it is family heirlooms so got some some swords and a shield there's a shield at the back that that's a shield from my sword um that's from the time of uh, tipu sultan of course made of elephant hide with the babris on them yeah that that that's a known one that's a registered one so that's a very rare piece probably the only existing shield provenanced to that period ever 
Thanks, thanks, oh. Nadim. Uh, so that really brings us to the end of today's uh, program. I must thank uh, you, Nidin, for anchoring this, and Amin, You're welcome for a fascinating journey into a very, very little-known history. You know, today when we sent out the mailer, we called it from Mysore to Philadelphia, and uh, I think what you have brought alive are the lesser-known facts, and you know the popular ones most people know about. And to do this kind of research in the trenches and look for every little nugget of thing that can piece the thing together. Uh, for doing that for BIC today and doing that for posterity, thank you so much, Amin. And once again, thank you, Nidin, for anchoring this event. You're welcome. Thank you for having us. Thank, thank you, you to the audience thank as you well. Very much. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Ravi sir. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you. Thank you.